All right, so welcome back to our second segment of the six ways to make cauliflower. The power of cauliflower. The power of ca cauliflower. Last week we talked about three recipes. Um, I'm Kay Spears. I'm a nutritionist, and this the is my nutritionist. <laughs> this is my husband, Chef Andrew, who is has been a chef in Vegas and New York and all over the world, and together. We are going to teach you how to make traditional recipes and make them not only taste good, but make, tell you about the nutrition benefits from each and everything we cook. That's right. right. When nutritious meets delicious. Yes. I'm delicious. <laughs> All right. So on to segment two about the power of cauliflower. Today we're going to go with a steakhouse dinner. Now I know that sounds really not in the uh, cauliflower realm, but you know what? That's why we're here. Yes. So the first thing we're going to start with is a cauliflower gratin. So imagine a uh, potato gratin, something nice, hot, cheesy, bubbly, Yummy. roasted, crusty that you get at a traditional steakhouse. We're going to do the same thing right now. So I'm going to focus in real quick. I'm just going to show you a couple of ingredients. So this is a roasted cauliflower. Slice thin. Uh, Toss in some olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper, in your oven at 400 degrees. Honestly, folks, just watch it. Flip it, watch it, flip it. When you achieve this type of espresso brown color, that's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Well, chef, how long does that take? Honestly, about 30 to 40 minutes. But just watch it. When it looks good, it smells nice and roasty and nutty, it's ready. So that part's done. Take that out. Actually, this is good. This is an amazing snack, just like it is I'm right here. I'm gonna eat here. it right now. Yeah, olive oil, salt, and pepper, roasted cauliflower, amazing snack. But we're gonna go 10 steps further. So take this right here. He's gonna make it taste even better. That's right. Mm -hmm. So some heavy cream. Ooh, I'm liking that already. Remember last week you had the uh, Parmesan Reggiana? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Same thing. Pinch of salt and pepper. And something that makes a lot of root vegetables and uh, cruciferous vegetables delicious from carrots to parsnips to rutabagas uh, to celery root to cauliflower is nutmeg. Nutmeg, you think of pumpkin, pump spot, pumpkin pie spice, you think of apple pie, but folks, nutmeg is just about as savory as it gets. So we're going to give a little bit of nutmeg. So if you didn't tune in last week, uh, cauliflower is a cruciferous vegetable, meaning that there's a whole class of them, broccoli, uh, turnips, root vegetables, and they have a sulfur in them that fight cancer. Really good for fighting cancer, really good for us. And one thing I also want to mention is brain health. Uh, cauliflower has something in it called choline, which helps our memory. How many of us feel like we can um, have better memory? <laughs> I'll raise my hand. So choline is in cauliflower, something that you don't know about. All right, so what we did, we tossed the roast cauliflower with the cheese, with the nutmeg, with the cream, with the salt and pepper, and put in a little cast iron skillet. Now, I know everybody doesn't have these at home. A perfectly small glass baking dish will do, all right? So now we're going to cover this with... And one other thing about cauliflower I want to mention is digestive health. So we, there's a bacteria that can overpopulate in our stomach called H. pylori that can actually cause stomach cancer. And cauliflower, believe it or not, has a very powerful, that same sulfur component in it that does not allow that bacteria to adhere to the stomach lining. So I just wanted to throw that in there. That's more. so hot when she talks <laughs> science. So what I covered this with is some local raw milk white cheddar. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the oven under the broiler on high and just watch it like you would a good mac and cheese or a potato gratin when it gets like crusty and melty and then it's time to come out. But I'll tell you what, you want to tell them real quick about the difference between regular cheddar and raw milk cheddar? Well, absolutely. Regular cheddar is processed. What we use is a raw milk cheddar, meaning that it's not, it has not gone through the pasteurization. Um, it still has all the good benefits in it. When you have a raw cheese, we have more organisms in our colon than there are stars in the galaxy. And so raw milk cheeses help us rebuild these organisms and help keep our digestion system strong and our immune systems um, where they should be. All right, so anywhere you can find at your local farmer's market, local raw milk, any kind of cheese, it doesn't have to be cheddar, blue cheese, Swiss, uh, Colby. If it's raw milk, then 
get on it. Actually, and the longer a cheese is aged, like the pungent cheeses, like blue cheese and stuff, they're actually fermented more, which means they're better for our guts and give us happy guts. Cheese head. <laughs> I am a cheese head, you know that. Yep. Give me anything with cheese and I love it. <laughs> All right, so on to the next of the steakhouse dinner. All right, so what are you going to show us next? You're going to show my favorite cauliflower mashers. Yep. Is that going to be a cauliflower ribeye? That it is. So we're on to the main event. So let's say you're vegan, and let's say you're on K Spears Phase 1 weight loss plan, and let's say that you're trying to really impress some friends with a really amazing steak and potato night. Steak and mashed potato night. Okay. So let's go start with a steak. So we call this a cauliflower ribeye. This is local organic cauliflower, center cut about probably an inch and a half. Okay, so this is going to mimic our meat. I'm going to show you in just a second how we're going to cook it because we're almost going to cook it kind of like a steak, but a little bit lower and slower. That way it gets nice and just really roasted. And we have a friend who's actually a vegetarian and we're, we love meat, so we have our grass-fed beef. But when she comes over, we make this, and you can't even tell the difference. I've actually served this to a bunch of friends who thought that it tasted like a steak. That's right. Now, the old, older, I guess, substitute is a portobello mushroom cat, but you know what? This is 2017. Let's do well, something different. Actually, you know, when you cook the portobello mushroom, um, it, it destroys a lot of the benefits and makes it a more toxic um, steak than actually the cauliflower. So this is a much I did not choice. know that. Yes, yes. All right. You then. want a portobello mushroom to be raw. You don't want to cook it. All right. Well, and we'll get back in the kitchen in a second to check that out. But the other thing we're going to make is cauliflower mashers. Mm -hmm. Now, the cauliflower mashers is boiled cauliflower, some heavily sauteed onions. I would say caramelized, but they're not. And if you say caramelized to a chef and they're not caramelized, shame on you. Because caramelized is a fart extensive process than just heavily sauteed. We've got some heavy cream, we got some garlic, and we get, again, some nutmeg. So come on in the kitchen, let's get this cooking. All right, so here we are live, cooking our cauliflower ribeye, just like a regular steak. So what we have is a hot cast iron. It's got about a tablespoon of olive oil and about two tablespoons of butter. That butter is going to be the flavor in this steak, along with a little bit of uh, salt and pepper. Now, every, all we're trying to do here is trying to color on both sides. We're not really trying to cook it here. That's going to happen in the oven. But as we color on both sides, we're going to take this butter oil in the pan, and we're going to baste and baste, and we're going to bathe, and the French call this collé. All right, so now we have our little base. We have colored on both sides. So now we're going to go into a 350 degree oven. And the reason why it's 350 and not 550 is we're trying to slow roast this. We want it to cook all the way through. We want to get it nice and tender and roasted and colored, but we don't want black bitter on the outside and white raw crunchy on the inside. So we're going to let that go. 350 degrees, probably about 25, 30 minutes. Again, this is all about love. So when the, when the steak, the cauliflower is just how you like it, that's when you take it out and you eat it. So I would say about every five minutes, take it out, flip it over, base, 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 put it back in. Five minutes, take it out, base, 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 flip it, excuse me, flip it, base, 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 and put it back in until it's the way that you like it. All right, right on to our, uh, to our next dish. Okay, so while the cauliflower ribeye and the cauliflower gratin are getting their love on in the oven, we're going to show you the, a great substitute to mashed potatoes. It's mashed cauliflower. So, moving forward to our cauliflower, this right here is we have about a half a head of boiled cauliflower. Boil it for about 15, 20 minutes until it's really, really soft. Now, the key to the mashed cauliflower is you've got to strain the cauliflower. If not, it's gonna add all that, this soaks up all the water, and if you get that water in your mash, you're gonna have more of a soup instead of a mash. So, you gotta let it drain for at least about an hour. So, go ahead and put that in your food processor, honey. Yes, and so while I'm doing this, I want to talk about um, methylation, which is a very important topic these days. If we're not properly methylating, we're going to have heart disease and all kinds of stroke and cardiovascular issues, and cauliflower actually help, has something in it to help us with the methylation process, so it's really good for the heart. Absolutely. Yes, right. so now what? So, now so, so the second thing is we have some onions that are heavily sauteed in butter. 
And this is probably grass fed butter. Yes, this is a half of a medium onion sauteed in half a stick of grass fed Kerrygold butter, plug, uh, and one clove of garlic. Now, the reason why we saute this heavily is because you're trying to almost caramelize the onion. You're trying to get that sugar sweetness out of the onion to add to this puree because potatoes are one big glucose molecule, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to emulate the sugar that you get out of a potato versus adding a little bit of sugar uh, sweetness to this. Mm -hmm. So this is about uh, half a medium onion sauteed and a half stick of butter uh, to a clove of garlic. Which is antiviral, antibacterial, so it's very good for us. And by the way, my dad is a meat and potatoes guy, and um, we tricked him with this recipe one night. We made some cauliflower mashers, and he thought they were real potatoes. So what Kay's putting it now is just a quarter cup of heavy cream. Here we go back to the healthy fats. Yes. Not only that, but it gives it a richness and a body to the cauliflower mash, so it's not so dry. It's got like this uh, thickness to it. It's just a it, it cream. I'm sorry, a creaminess to it. Uh, also, what we said one more time. Don't forget that. Don't forget, this is the magic ingredient. Nutmeg, it's one of those things that when you taste it in something like parsnips and celery root and cauliflower, you like, man, that's great, but I don't know what that is. It's probably not. It's the hidden secret. That's right. You so, want to start this now? One second. So, oh. what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and puree this until it's a just fine, smooth uh, cauliflower puree. And then the key to this next is you have to let it set up a little bit one time because you have to let that butter uh, re-solidify to get that mash and then when you reheat it, it's not going to be as uh, loose as it will be right now. Okay. All right. Ready to go? Turn it on. Okay. For TV sake, we're gonna color that good, but I would let it go. See if you got like yeah. a piece of onions in here. It needs to all be mixed for and sure. Yes, it needs to be an absolutely fine puree. Yes, but I would eat it right now. I would Just too, saying. actually. You know, I said something about letting it cool, but my wife's got away with this recipe, and mm. I. Mmm. Pretty darn good. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. All right. It's on. The cauliflower is just the body, just like the potato. The onions are going to give you that sweetness, and you have the garlic and the cream to give you that creaminess. Yes. But the health benefits involved, and what you're saving from the glucose and the potato, is just, I know it's not a, a mashed potato, but if, if, if your health is your wealth, then this is what we do. And it tastes great, and again, it, it's not going to convert to sugar rapidly in the body, so if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic, then this is gonna be the recipe for you. So you don't have to give up the good taste. And everybody likes their potatoes, but I'm telling you, I'm a potato girl, but since Andrew, Chef Andrew, has introduced cauliflower into my world, um, they're hands down, this is the best. And this is why we're here. So I'll tell you what, two more treats. Let's take a look at that rattan on that steak. Oh yeah, yes. And by the way, if anybody has any questions about our recipes, I know we don't have a lot of time to cover everything, you can go to our nutritious, uh, nu nutritious meats delicious at gmail.com and post any questions you may have, or if you would like these recipes, we will be the more than happy to get these out to you. All right. Oh, and I just want to tell them about our book. We do have a culinary guide coming out in January. It's going to be a complete culinary guide with recipes, and we're also going to have nutrition tips in it, and also food history. Uh, Food history tidbits. tidbits. Yes. That's right, along with uh, health tidbits. Yes. <laughs> All right, so here's our uh, side dish. This is our cauliflower rattan, oh, which yeah. is ooh, nice and like gooey gooey on top. Yeah. And like I said, uh, trying to compare it to a potato rattan, it's got the same texture, it's got the same cheese, it's got the same cream. You just, you're missing all the, the not as great stuff from potato, but getting all the great stuff from the cauliflower. And then the piece of resistance. I'll make sure that I taste that for you. Just saying. <laughs> Ooh, this is our yeah. cauliflower ribeye. Ooh, Close. that's beautiful. Do you want to cut that with a fork? Oh, yeah. Do we need a knife or? No. Actually, 
That is so nice. Super tender, wow. super roasted. That's gonna be hot. Buttery, yeah, that's gonna be hot. But that's like a buttery steak that any vegan would love. This is perfect. So you can get all the nutrient benefits without getting uh, the actual meat. And you get meat. the feel of that knife and fork, roasted, crusted. Yeah. So you can play along with your friends if you're a vegan or you're a vegetarian or you're on, like I said, on oh. Kay Spears phase one weight loss plan, then mm -hmm. this is for you. So like Kay said, we don't have a lot of time to completely go through the recipes on our show, but if you'll email us, we'll be more than happy to send you a complete beginning to end uh, video or explanation of anything we've done here today or any of our shows. Yes. All right. All right. So then tune in for our next show where we're going to be talking about the... Right. We're going to talk about how to spice up your dish. Yes. Uh, we talk about chicken is a khaki pants of the culinary world. <laughs> we're going to teach you how to spice up your khaki pants. So anyway, make sure and subscribe to us on YouTube. Yes. And catch us next time as... We... Save, save the, the world, world one, one bite at a time. time.